When he first appeared at Bathurst in 1969 to join the new Monaro factory team, it was clear he was something special. A new star from Hurstbridge, Victoria, discovered by the wily Harry Firth to challenge the established order of the day. The Gagan brothers, Fred Gibson, Barry Seaton, Kevin Bartlett and others. His first win for Holden came in 1972, a crushing victory for the new Holden Tirana XU1 over arch rival Alan Moffat's Falcon GTHO. The battle between Brock and Moffat became legendary. The emotional, tough-talking Canadian driving for the Blue Oval, head-to-head -head with Australia's golden boy, firmly entrenched in the lion's den. Brock's victories mostly came at Moffat's expense. The first win in 1972 started a chain of nine Bathurst crowns, nine Sandown wins, three Australian Touring Car Championships and led to the mantle of Peter Perfect. Brock joined Bradman and Brabham as icons in Australian sport. Despite hanging up his helmet in 1997, Brock couldn't quench the fire in his belly for one more Bathurst win. Mount Panorama exudes a magnetic aura, drawing you back for the challenge year after year. The costs can be high, but the victories are unique. At 58 years of age and 34 years after his first Bathurst appearance, Brock is back where he started, Monaro mounted and with a stellar cast of co-drivers hell-bent on delivering Peter his perfect 10. The Bathurst 24-hour endurance race, a truly international event. A battle for the world's fastest road cars in a race against time itself. Man, muscling the mountain, Monaro, monstering the world, the maestro, mastering the arts. Well, 131 Australians, 16 from the UK, 10 New Zealanders, 5 Germans, 3 Austrians, 2 Danish drivers, 2 from the USA, 1 Brazilian, 1 Italian, 1 Indonesian, 1 Malaysian, 1 hell of a race field, David Anderson. <laughs> we said last year this event would pick up, we said it was going to become bigger and better, and there is the proof, a fantastic grid lined up, ready for action. Can't wait for the start of this one. The safety car will lead them off, but we must point out straight away, the minute the cars start rolling, this race is underway. The clock will be ticking. The countdown will be on for 2003. Oh, what's going to happen, folks? It's Australia taking it to the world one more time, but not one Monaro this year. We've got two Monaros, the one that won the race last year, the 427 Just Cars Insurance car, but Brock at 05, back in the red. Monaro, second fastest yesterday in qualifying, starting alongside his teammate in this race will this be peter brock's 10th bathurst win away they go we've got the green flag so the 24-hour endurance race here at mount panorama is now underway they'll do one lap behind the safety car then take the green flag that's the way it looks only 23 hours and 59 minutes to go Welcome Australia, Monaro returns and two of them on the front row as we come down behind the safety car, getting set for the green flag to single the first race at speed. Three or four drivers per car in the race stats, a maximum of three hours per driver in each car, one hour between, uh, they must have at least one hour rest between the driving stints, total driving time per driver, a maximum of nine hours. Well, let's see how we're going to shape up this year. The safety car will pull off to pit lane and we will be underway at race pace. The two Holden Monaro side by side already starting to get a bit push and shove alongside each other. Let's see how it's going to be at the end of lap one. The Mosler sitting back there on the second row of the grid. We are standing by for a real racing start. Nathan Pretty and Peter Brock side by side. Then the sensational BMW M3 GDR. Then the Mosler. Then of course it's the Fitzgerald Falcon Tires Porsche coming down to take the green flag and signal the start at race speed of the second 24 hour endurance race live from Mount Pen Panorama Bathurst. And it's going to be Nathan Pretty who dives into the lead at Shell Corner. Peter Brock goes second. Third is John Bauer. Martin Short fourth as they climb a man for the first time. And the Moser and the BMW side by side, but Martin Short just powers ahead there. Yeah, Martin Short really got the power down exceptionally well out of Shell Corner. Really got the, the horsepower working in his advantage. Moves up into third spot. And the Fitzgerald car, the Porsche in the mix 
as well. 45 cars in this race, folks. Watch the yellow and black Lamborghini coming through now with a green and blue Porsche alongside. That's the car to watch, the car that we thought would take pole position from the Monaros. It didn't. We had one dry qualifying session, then a wet qualifying session. The Lamborghini had problems in the first session. They had to change the radiator. We really don't know the true race speed of this car. Four very good drivers on board that Lamborghini. Paul Stokel at the wheel at the moment. I was talking with one of them, Peter Hackett, as we see a little bit of smoke on from some of the cars as they head across the top of the mountain for the first time. Hackett said this weekend has been about being consistent and working out what we need to do to win this one. We desperately, desperately want it, David. Yeah, Martin Short said to me earlier on today as well, he was going to do the heroics in the first hour and then calm down a little bit. So the Mosler running third. Is he going to be able to do anything about the Monaros? Nathan Pretty leads Peter Brock across the top of Mount Panorama for the first time. Martin Short getting away from John Bow, and in turn, he's coming under pressure now from Paul Morris at the Porsche. Yeah, Morris is the one to watch car 54. Now, that's a Carrera Cup car that's been specced up to run in the outright class. It's been quick all weekend. Good quality of car drivers in that car as well. Peter Fitzgerald, Scott Shearman, so uh, John Chulin also, who's the car owner. Morris behind the wheel now would be keen to stay on the back end of that BMW. Didn't Peter Brock say a few moments ago that he was going to sit behind and see what these guys were going to do? He's looking very racy on this opening lap. Yeah, well, Brock's out for a win number 10, and it's a very, very serious attempt that started here last year. He got enthralled by this event, riding with Peter Brock now, absolutely enthralled by the excitement of it. Came back this year, has done effectively a full year in Nations Cup. In this car, he's had five wins, and uh, there's no doubt about it, David, uh, Gary Rogers Motorsport and Holden are certainly well ahead of the game when it uh, came to Bathurst this weekend. Absolutely right. I mean, the car surprised so many people last year with its reliability. It was a great win then, and of course, everybody willing Peter Brock on. But look at Martin Short reeling in the Monaros at the end of the lap now. The Mosler rides up with Brocky as they head across the line. John Bow dropping back a little bit in fourth place. Now Peter Brock is going to have to get a wriggle on. He doesn't really want the Mosler coming past him. Nathan Pretty inching away, but the fight's off at second place now, though. Well, the Mosler left was sitting left sitting in the shadows last year it's not the case this year we heard from martin short before the start of the race a new setup new confidence about his driving ability around this mountain and what a great car to do it in race score shows nathan pretty on top over peter brock martin short john bow paul morris paul stokel al Zen and quinn round out your eight <laughs> Right here with John Bow now, the sensational brand new BMW M3 GDR V8. Only arrived in Australia some 10 days ago. One of only six in the world, powered by a five litre, pretty much a stock five litre um, uh, BMW engine. There's not a lot being done to it, but uh, it's a light car, about 1,100 kilos, will be quick. Superb BMW reliability, one would hope, David Addison, over the, the 24 hours of this race, but really, it's an unknown quantity. It is, yeah, I mean, it's a good team running it, it's a good team driving it, but they're going to have to make this big step into the unknown, and you can see now as well that John John Bowers coming under pressure from Paul Morris and can we've also had a graphic example on this lap at the top of the mountain of the amount of traffic that they're going to encounter this year of course it's a much bigger entry uh, than last year but the traffic's going to be a real problem isn't it it's so as they stand at the moment Nathan Pretty, Peter Block, Paul Stokel, Martin Short, Paul Morris then Harvey Brabham and Bow. let's go down to the pits with Grant Denyer well, the atmosphere down here is about as warm as an English Sutton winter day, so it's not real good for the Morgan at the moment. The team were a little bit concerned about some fluid that being released. They thought they were going to be black flagged, so they thought they'd bring the car in on themselves in their own terms and take a look at what it is. They weren't too sure whether it was oil or coolant. As it turns out, as what we can see on the ground, it is coolant, but what it is doing is it's throwing fluid over the windscreen, so he's having a great difficulty seeing, uh, but hopefully they fix that car and it's back out now. We'll have to see. Yeah, another British team in a little bit of trouble. It's a Surtec team. Remember, they led for so long last year. Ian Donaldson's driving the green Kawasaki car. Well, you brought the car in. What happened, Ian? One of the oil filler cap was loose. The Jubilee clip that was uh, retaining the cap was broken. The cap came loose on the uh, first lap, putting oil onto the exhaust. Hence the smoke. The organisers pulled us in. OK, they got, the job got fixed. And now, they said that as per Peter went around another three laps, they sort of still got some oil smoke from the residue from the oil. They've actually made us come back in again, wanted us to do a drive through, but they didn't, the official then held us here. Okay, and now there's a little bit of two yeah, of fracas going on, but we're all okay. We've got no problem with the car. Peter Brock has moved into the race lead. Peter Brock up Mountain Straight has unleashed 05 and now has moved ahead of his teammate, Nathan Pretty in car 427. Brock is on a mission. Now, come on, Cameron, is that in the game plan? You're looking on very concerned there. Absolutely not. Brock's supposed to follow us all day until we say so, and that's it. But, uh, yeah, sure. No, look, uh, we really, uh, we, we didn't, we, we were not concerned who leads the race. 
just a matter of uh, running around and, and not running into each other. So, oh, it looks like the Lamborghini's uh, just gone off. Uh, I noticed his lap was quite slow, the previous lap. Okay, uh, car 20, that's Paul Stokel. And he's gone off at uh, the Caltex Hamilton Chase back on the road and now. He's got a bunch of so, yes, a flat uh, right hand rear tyre as Stokel slowly makes his way back to the pits in the Donut King Lamborghini. Well, he's gone off at the right place, you could argue. He's not that far from the pit lane. He hasn't got far to limp, but the car very, very slowly making his way down the pit lane. Now, was the puncture the result or the cause of him going off? Either way, he's limping his way down the pit lane. This is agonizingly slow. This is the fight for third and for fourth because they're nose to tail. It's Tim Harvey in the Surtec Porsche just ahead of David Brabham there with the Ferrari 360 and Brabham has been working his way up the order. Tim Harvey, who missed the first qualifying session altogether. That car had a, a clutch problem. Now has the Ferrari alongside and through into third place. David Brabham goes through as they approach Konica Band. Well, we said the Porsche was moving up the order, but David Brabham them now after a fairly uh, mediocre start over the first few laps he's now absolutely flying he was just playing himself in gradually and now Brabham is absolutely charging oh problem still on the Hancock replay problem there for Martin Short in the Mosler got caught up in some traffic that's right and um, just running over the curb and onto the grass getting away with it but of course that's something that can help create these punctures problems with car 24 yeah and it was a puncture i was right so another car with a punctured tire the lamborghini by the way that we know had a puncture earlier has gone back out again five laps down well where is paul stoker was nearly at the end of the lap tim harvey's got a limp virtually the whole way around the mountain there is another car in trouble it's one of the, the bmws car 40 has gone in at the donut king is robert brooks the auctioneer and he's done a lot of damage to the front of it just hear him talking to the team at the moment this may well be a safety car situation i'd suggest where the car is on the track at the moment. You can see that he's crunched the right-hand front guard and suspension quite hard. Let's have a look at the replay. Whoa. Oh, we got caught up with the uh, the VIP Pet Foods Porsche of Tony Quinn at the wheel. Crunched the BMW against the wall, and that's what's caused all the damage. Well, there it sits. Is the safety car going to be out on track? Yes, our timing screen has got a yellow band on it. That means the safety car will be out on the circuit. And the reason is pretty obvious, because Brooks's car has got a lot of damage. It sits by the side of the road, and that needs removing. <laughs> You can see all these cars that are now filing their way back into pit lane under safety car to change from wet to dry tyres, or I should say from dry to wet tyres. We saw Brock come in, first of the cars under safety car, right on lap 30, the race leader. And he, of course, David Edison, has really handed the race lead to uh, Stephen Richards in car 427. That's right, it's a Monaro 1-2, but all that's going to be thrown into the air now as people have to decide when to come in for these wet tyres or indeed gamble on whether it's a passing shower and how quick the track will dry out. But pretty much everybody now coming in for wet. So you can see off come the slicks from the Morgan, a wet Dunlop's going on. We haven't talked much about the Morgan. Tell us about this car. We saw it briefly, but uh, it, it's really quite uh, exciting, isn't it? Yeah, it runs in GT Cup in the British GT Championship. This particular car finished third in the Spa 1000 kilometres. It's got a 4.6-litre uh, BMW engine in it. It makes a great sound, this Morgan. Uh, still, some of its construction is wood. And there you can see the activity going on in the pit lane. Behind it is the Mosler. Martin Short has uh, got out of that car. It's back in for wet tyres. And just look at this. It's like a who's who of the motor yeah. industry. You've got Mosler, Ferrari. Further down the pit lane, Holden and Lamborghini back in, of course, and it's not a problem it's in for this time. It's just to go from slicks to wax. See, the rain is torrential at the moment. We've got thunder and lightning, and all in all, not a very pleasant time to be at Mount Panorama. Just been advised by race control, they're actually going to stop the safety car on pit strace and bring the field to a halt so bad the conditions here at the moment it's, it's really quite amazing uh, david when you think about it this i've never seen the cars being held on the track like this and down in the pit lane drowning in all of this is the redoubtable andrew marriott i'm trying to keep out of the rain david i've got <laughs> klaus engelhorn with me i'm obviously from austria i have a bit of rain there. the right decision to stop the race here yes definitely i think so it's a security issue if there's too much water on the on the track it's simply too dangerous to run 290 kilometers per hour well, uh, even with rain tires when there is a, a sea on the track. So I'm, I'm glad that they, um, they are stopping because the clouds will go and then we can continue and safe and, and, and nice. There's the safety car now, coming through the Caltex Hamilton chase. Lights are off, so we're set for a restart. And you can see there's a field of slower cars in uh, front of the race leader, the Yellow Monaro, with 
Stephen Richards behind the wheel. He can't pass anybody, of course, till he gets to the start-finish line. And those cars, in effect, have lost a lap, of course, to the race leader, because what really should happen is that the race leading car is behind the safety car. Well, in all the confusion of having to stop them on the grid and so forth, that now means that the leading car is sixth, seventh, eighth in the pack. All of this traffic comes across the line now. And there, 427, the race leading car in the hands of Stephen Richards goes for a green flag, thunders across the line. We're back racing then at Mount Panorama. But the car to watch is the Ferrari, number 48, Philippe Pedro at the wheel of it. You can see it coming up on the inside carving its way through the traffic it's going after the leading Monaro all of the traffic and this now really is a testing time for the drivers how hard do you push Greg Murphy pressing on now bringing down the gaps between himself and his teammates and there you can see a lapped car ahead of him in 16th place Paul Stokel's Lamborghini that was another one that had a puncture and then some brake line damage earlier on the Lamborghini team playing catch up and Greg Murphy thundering on in pursuit of the race leader with the back in the field currently looking at uh, car 70 Another one of the UK entries from Graham Nash Motorsport, David. Yeah, the team here last year, that car was crashed by Chris Maris at the top of the mountain last year. It's owned by Mike Newton, who's driving it at the moment. Mike races primarily these days in the FIA GT Championship in a Celine uh, with Tommy Erdos, who's with him here this weekend. Mike's race at Bathurst, though, in the past. And the Super Touring Data, that's oh! Porsche losing it ahead of him. That's the Peter Floyd car that's already had a lengthy pit stop. Now it has a spin and somehow has managed to keep away from anything solid. And that was a great save. Fitzy now, who won here in 99. 97 with Jimmy Richards, same coloured car for different specs at that time, took out the three-hour showroom showdown in a tremendous battle with the Ferrari of Neil Crompton's by two tenths of a second, locks up the inside, shuts the door, Marshall shuts the door but he's hung out to dry, now it's a drag race, Marshall's on the inside, up they run towards Falcon Tyres, Fitzy is forced to yield. Marcus Marshall had the line but they've also got Jonathan Rowland's Surtec car ahead that they need to lap, now Rowland has got to get out of the way, otherwise Marcus Marshall's going to be compromised, he dives through on the inside, he goes ahead of Rowland and Peter Fitzgerald just gets past slight hesitation you can't blame him for it though and Peter Fitzgerald I reckon has lost a length possibly two there to Marcus Marshall but there's another bat marker ahead of them now absolutely I mean this is brave stuff for a 24-hour race under these conditions to be doing this sort of stuff through lap traffic 55 laps down here at Mount Panorama oh. problems for the Surtec Porsche car 24 this is Jonathan Roller behind the wheel that he's uh, sharing with the British touring car champion Tim Harvey Herman Tilke and uh, Australian female racer Melinda Price now obviously he's lost it in the the greasy conditions just banged the wall at Skyline. I tell you what, Lucky didn't do a lot more damage. Yeah, hopefully it's not going to be too bad and it's only going to be cosmetic uh, changes they need to get that car back out onto the circuit. Uh, problems too for the BMW M3 GDR of John Bauer, Neil Crompton, Greg Crick and Mihir al -Ghadri. In fact, uh, John Thompson's in the pits with Neil Crompton now. When I first went out, John, it was... We didn't change the wets, we left the other wets on, the existing wets, because we figured the warm tyres were to go, but they were, the rears were shot, so it was an absolute nightmare when I first got in the car. But uh, Phil just said, look, don't worry about it, press on with what you got. And, and uh, as soon as the moment came where you could put slicks on the car, and we put slicks on it, and it was actually quite good. Traffic's just, you know, it's, it's, it's real hard work, but when you could get a reasonable rhythm, I found you could make some pace in the car in a couple of good, easy, lazy places, and, uh, yeah, so I was quite happy with the stint, but obviously uh, it's not good when you're in here. Well, PHR Scuderia team boss Terry Little was saying that it was unfortunate that they didn't get the car earlier, they didn't get enough development time, and they were unsure what sort of problems they were going to have when they got here to Mount Panorama, and obviously that car having a major problem. <laughs> Well, long night ahead for the car owner, Mihir al Ghadri, going out now in the BMW M3 GDR. But this is the superb effort by the Falcon Tyres team. Yeah, they've done a great... Oh, problems for the Morgan! Car 66, I think that's Neil Cunningham behind the wheel. Well, this is a bit of a shock. BMW reliability under the bonnet of that car, and we expect it to go a lot further than this, but you can see the trail of oil. It's leaking. It's expired big time. Looks terminal, too. I tell you what, they had uh, overheating problems earlier in the day. Their first attempt here at uh, the Bathurst 24-hour endurance race, and so many fans excited to see this rather unique-looking car here. Let's go to uh, Daryl Dixon in pit lane, find out what the problem is with the Morgan Aero 8. We've just seen the car come past uh, front of pit straight. It was going solidly at doing 30 and 28 so we were really happy then it's just started to smoke really bad coming up pit straight so i believe it's parked around the corner hopefully they'll recover it fairly quickly and we can get it back in the pits and see what's going on not a great sight for the world's oldest privately owned car manufacturer morgan being towed behind the pit apron yeah it's a long way to come for nil result and it's being dragged away at the moment and you'd have to assume by the, the look of the damage that we saw as the car came round. Oh, oh, bigger oh, problems! Oh, that's, a, that's on top of the mountain. That's at Skyline. 
That's the BMW of um, Mark Westbrook, I think. Car 26, I tell you what, he's gone in hard too. That's a fast part of the track. There you are, there's the replay. Ooh. Crunch into the tyres, upends the car, drags the tyres with it, spins the car around. Gee, I tell you what, he's gone in very, very hard. You're right, Craig, that is an enormous hit. Look at the ferocity that it goes into the tyre wall with. Thank goodness there was a tyre wall there. Uh -oh. oh, problems for Algadri. Algadri in uh, car 420A, the one that just uh, left the pits not that long ago. The John Bauer, Greg Crick, Neil Crompton car now. That has stopped coming up the mountain. And by the look of the left-hand side of the car, it seems to be quite a bit of damage. You can see the front guard has drooped down a little bit. And uh, don't know what's caused that, although word from race control is uh, there may well have been an incident with 05, Peter Brock at the time. Well, hopefully that... The 05 car's still OK. We'll see if we can pick it up for you, but Mahir Algadri will not be happy about that. There's the 05 car just going behind the safety car at the moment as car 48 comes into pit lane. Started a race of pit stops. This is a car that's uh, sat well in third spot for most of the weekend. The BE racing team car engineered by Australian Paul Cruikshank. Klaus Engelhorn getting behind the wheel as the uh, Algadri, Bow, Crick, Crompton BMW. And you can see again the... Uh, the left-hand rear wheel hanging over at a horrible angle, so I'd say a lot of damage to the car. Yeah, disappointment for them. They f just got the car back out onto the track, and it, it was looking strong to, to try and finish this race. Safety car pulls off the circuit now, though. We're back under race conditions. The, the sun has set. The headlights are on. What a scene this is. Car 427 continues to lead. The Just Car Insurance Monaro wraps up Steve Williams, Cromer Exhaust, Future Tourer, Holden Commodore as it goes through Shell Corner and up the mountain straight with light rain now starting to fall again at Mount Panorama. Rain, night time, Mount Panorama. What an unusual cocktail of problems for the Lamborghini car. Yeah, word from Andrew Smith on the team radio. Car back on 11 cylinders, so they're trying to find the problem. We still should be able to win with 11 cylinders. Problems also there for the Porsche. A lot of work actually going on in pit lane as this rain continues to fall. You can see it now. It's actually quite heavy here at the mountain. Let's look, have a look at the, the Holden leaderboard for you. Greg Murphy continues to lead in uh, the car is sharing with Peter Brock, the 05 Monaro from Tanda. Brabham in the Ferrari. Morris, now there's been a lead change in Class B. The first time the Dubai Olsen has led in a tremendous time and also the fastest car on the track at the moment, a 219.3 in these conditions. <laughs> Peter Brock in the pits now. That's the uh, the car that's led this race for the last hour or so since the, the last safety car period anyhow comes in. Crew checking the rear end of the car. We'll listen to the radio for you. Lift the bonnet and have a look under the engine bay. Well, there you are. Clear words from team manager. While we've got the time, have a look under the engine bay. Check that everything's OK. Is there a problem with the car? I reckon there is because that's a concerned face there for the mechanic. They aren't doing this just for fun. There is some problem or some hint of a problem. Looking into the car, I still think it's Greg Murphy in that. Looking, it's, it's a full face helmet, not the open face helmet that Brocky wears. Andrew Marriott's no doubt on the scene, ready to try and find out what the problem is. Shut the bonnet, send him back over the line. Andrew Merritt, you're on the spot. What's happening down there? Yeah, the car is accelerating out of the pits. They did actually have a little bit of a problem with the uh, windscreen wipers. They're just a bit of an underbody check. Oh! The Mosler! The Mosler spun on top of the mountain. Now, Heather Spurl, the female driver, is behind the wheel at the moment. And she has done a fantastic job to keep that car off the wall. Well, plenty of people have done that before and not been able to continue on in the race. I tell you what, I think she might have got caught up with a slower car. I couldn't quite pick up who it was, but I tell you what, she was so lucky. Well, you see how greasy the conditions are to get away with that. Oh, I'm sure she'll have uh, plenty of things to say about this one. Look at the car. Stayed right in the centre of the track. She controlled it very well. It's turn the wheel so the car spins around points in the right direction yeah. and it gets back on it again yeah. very professional job it was the honda s2000 the ross palmer motorsport car that i think she may just have tagged the rear end of yeah well it certainly cost her not only plenty of time i'd say a few gray hairs will be on the head as a result of that extremely difficult conditions here at mount panorama as you can see the mosler mt 900r now coming into pit lane the car that uh, has been currently driven by heather spurl Martin Short, Patrick Pierce, Charles Lamb, the other three drivers, the car that finished second in last year's 24-hour race. Well, after that big spin at the top of the mountain, Craig, I bet you can't wait to get out of the car and just go and take a few moments to herself to catch a breath. That was a very, very big moment. Car pulls up into its pit garage, ready to go. You see some light damage to the uh, front end of the car too. The Deutsche Bank backed superb car, the car that uh, won the British GD Championship for this team 
uh, this year in the UK. But, uh, not a lot of damage. She was extremely lucky to get away with it. And Martin Shaw, quite happy with where they're currently placed on the track too. They've run consistently inside the top seven since pretty much the race start. So far, hold the fastest lap of the race. Yeah, Craig, you can see that she stays in the car while they refuel at all important. You know, nowadays, the safety in these refueling sessions. Plenty of race tape going on the car. Yeah. It's trying to patch up the front of it. Let's go down to uh, the pits where I did to find out what happened with Heather Spur. Yeah, I clipped a back marker. I, I'd been overtaking cars before that incident and after that incident in the same spot, but that one I just obviously cut it a bit close or he turned into me a little bit. I'm not sure. I'd have to see the TV coverage, but either way, we got a bit too close and it did a 360 up there and I was lucky to keep it off the wall. But... Oh, problems oh. for... Gee, I'll tell you what, I think that may well be the, uh, the BE Racing Ferrari 360 GT. Yes, it is. Now, that's at uh, Forest Elbow. So I don't know whether he's turned the car around, whether he's hit the wall. Problems also for the uh, unique cars, Ferrari 360 Challenge in pit lane. Yeah, this is this has come as a real shock. The 11 car being pushed up pit lane at the moment. Word from Paul Cruikshank, engine failure in the F360 GT Ferrari driven by a class Engelhorn. Yeah, disappointment that. We'll look at this car on screen at the moment coming down under brakes have a look at them glow gives you a realistic idea of how hard these cars have got to work around mount panorama over a 24-hour period as the sun starts to rise and claw its way through the clouds here at mount panorama it's an incredible circuit and racing through the night right on dawn as we are now it's an incredible feeling going across the top of the hill stephen richards leads this race in the 427 cubic inch monaro from 05 peter brock the fitzgerald porsche running third out right at this stage oh, oh! Another problem too. This is in fact the Keith Downing Alfa Romeo 156 GDA and it's gone in hard. We were looking at this car earlier on and saying what a great package it was. This is what went wrong. Came up into the cut and got it all ugly and hit the wall very, very hard. Gee, hard to pick up what happened there, whether he got out on the marbles, he saw the Lynn BMW coming up behind him, whether he moved over onto the left-hand side of the track and then just got caught on the marbles and then sucked straight into the wall. The Lamborghini back in pit lane two. For a pit stop, plenty of work going on around that car, and, and this, this is why. Oh dear, puncture number seven. Can you believe that for the Donut King Clarion Team Lamborghini Diablo GDR? Look at that, another blown left-hand front tire. And this is an unusual problem. This is not something that we've seen go wrong with the car throughout the series. It's just something that's reared its ugly head, but that's what Mount Panorama's all about, especially during 24-hour enduro races. You have to think on the fly to try and get there to the finish. Problems for Zertek. We were just talking about how good things were looking for them. This is like the start of the race all over again. Remember that first two hours, lots of punctures yesterday. Oh, problems too for the Loadsman Commodore. This is the Loadsman Luff class leading Commodore at one stage. Yeah, they've had problems with the power steering on that car, leaking oil, and that's been the problem. And there's a lot of oil smoke coming from underneath the car. I wonder if this is a continuation. Rob Sherl telling Andrew Donaldson to bring the car in really slowly, don't do any damage to it. And thankfully, he didn't have to limp too far. He doesn't have to limp too far down the pit lane either. Andrew Donaldson, plenty of experience in endurance racing. There's a new championship in Britain, the European Endurance Championship. There you see him having a big moment with that flat. I'm sure if he picked up a puncture. Well, he's six laps up on the next car, Andrew, so he's pretty secure in that place at the moment, which is seventh overall. As we saw early on in the race, sometimes you have a puncture like that, you can do quite a lot of damage, brake line, or uh, there's a, a rear stay behind there, which sometimes when they actually have the tyre go, it pulls the rear stay out, and they have to fix that. As we look back at this car, currently sitting in third spot, Paul Morris behind the wheel of the 54 car, a car that's a couple of laps down on our race leaders, but still looking very, very strong. We said coming into this race that the Porsche mark, uh, Andrew, would be very, very strong, and it's living to prove right here at the moment that it's probably one of the only cars that hasn't had a major uh, problem with it. No, they've had a very good run indeed. I mean, Porsche do build these cars to last. The whole Porsche reputation is built on sports car racing. They have a very strong customer uh, race department under Jürgen Barth back in uh, Germany. And they just did, they've just been racing these 911 so long, they've just got better and better and better. And you know, over the period of 30 years almost. <laughs> and they have a lot of horsepower. That engine is so strong, that boxer unit just produces so much horsepower. 
Now, this is not uh, a car that's actually owned by Martin Short. I believe this is now leased from Mosler. This is one that was brought across to Martin's team after his original car that we saw here last year was written off at Thruxton, and they got this car within about a week of uh, the Spa 1000 kilometres. Here it comes, it David. A race car, and it won the Spa 1000 Ks on the last lap. It's in the pit lane now, Andrew. Certainly is. So this uh, team, who have most of them worked with Martin since the days when he was the king man in TVRs, go to work. That's Heather Spurl about to get into the car. The tall frame of Patrick Pearce out, and Heather Spurl into the Mosler. Martin Short was saying to me after a long stint in the car last night, he had so much cramp in his body, he couldn't get out, he had to be pulled out of the car. Getting out's another story. <laughs> Especially when you're as old as Martin, yeah. Well, the car is fifth, oh! and a big, big lose there for 27. Mark King behind the wheel, too. Oh, and oh, it's lost the wheels. Oh, no. Hard off the right rear wheel. Gee, this is the car that's running second in Class D. Here's the replay of what transpired. Car turns in. Oh, oh dear. Nothing to do to save it. If I can get it back to the front of the bay, we can put the standard wheel stuff back in the bay. Just under three hours, or just over three hours to go after what has been a tremendous performance, second in class, and uh, how would you feel, eh? Well, I think Mark King just about summed that up a few moments ago. Disappointed, to say the least. This is the Bathurst 24-hour endurance race, presented by Formula Green, Stephen Richards, the race leader from Peter Brock. Morris, the first of the Porsches from the Olsen Brothers car. Then the Mosler with Heather Spool behind the wheel. Marcus Marshall in the VIP Pet Foods car. Donaldson's Porsche, then Will Power in the GD3 RS. <laughs> There may be a chink in the armour. The 427 car, we understand, has a problem with the rear diff. Apparently it's overheating a bit. They have, have a big discussion going on at the moment, deciding whether to maybe try and fit a cooler onto that diff. That will take a long time. So it isn't all over yet, but I hope to speak to Gary Rogers. He's just gone back into conference in the back of the garage. But let's see what happens with this concern in the 47 pit. Yes, that'll be interesting. Six tenths of a second between Stephen Richards in 427. And Peter Brock in 05. Although that time through Richard's lap quicker than Brock, would you believe? So <laughs> the question mark remains, doesn't it? A car six in the pits now. Uber Altson, Jürgen Altson, along with Michael Bartels and Arno Clausen, the drivers of that car. And it has been an excellent run in the wet conditions, particularly. Uber Altson has been a bit of a hero this weekend. Did some tremendous times in the wet, there's no doubt about it. This was a gun car that came behind or from behind in Class B and uh, for sale sign after this weekend. Only used for 24 hours, one weekend in November. Good value, folks, but uh, some inspiring driving from this team, particularly in the wet. Yeah. They've had a, a race-long battle with the VIP Pet Foods Porsche of Tony Quinn, Marcus Marshall, Grant Denyer and Clark Quinn, and uh, they had a tremendous job too. They're still sitting second in class. They had some fuel problems with the car during the night, which allowed the Alton car to get ahead. Now they're bringing the Monaro in. Well, how long is this going to take? The race leader's already gone over to the Brock car, the 05 car being driven at the moment by Greg Murphy, and there's a driver change going on with 427 as well. Yes, now what uh, are they actually going to do to the car? Will it be a, uh, a diff cooler change to the rear end? Will they try and hotwire the, the, the pump to the battery, which has been suggested? They've got a whole, as you saw earlier, rear axle assembly on standby to go into the car, but a critical moment for the car that has led the majority of this 24-hour insurance race. Well, it's been like a tank all weekend. Absolutely nothing's gone wrong with it. And at the critical moment, they find the car sitting there in pit lane. Now, the good news is that they are a couple of laps up on their nearest competition. So if they can get the car back out, they're still looking good for a 1-2. Got uh, Diff Oil on standby there and plenty of activity around the rear end. Also cleaning out the front of the car as well. So let's go down to uh, the pits. And again, Andrew Marriott right on the spot. Yes, indeed, and there are two mechanics working under the car. They have some oil ready to pump into the diff. They are working on it. Some uh, just being pushed out of the way by a fire marshal here. I wasn't going to get in the way. It isn't going to catch fire. But they are working on this car at the moment. Now, I want you to contemplate this right now. If they do this very quickly, this car will not have to make another pit stop. It can go the rest of the way. The Brock car, I think, will have to make no. a splash and a dash. No. So that could be the whole crux of the matter. Work still going on, this diff here, and obviously a high drama down here at Holden. It's just run like clockwork for 23 hours, and now all of a sudden this happens. This uh, pit stop still continuing, guys. 
Back to you in the booth, and I'll try and uh, come back with some update in just a couple of moments. Well, Gary, at the moment, you have two very hot-headed young drivers who love to race. It's quite an unusual predicament for you to have after a 24-hour race, two cars so close together that want to win. Well, I think clearly you've got two great drivers and two great cars. And, uh, I mean, it's fortunate for the whole team that the cars are still able to race like that at this point after 24 hours. I think it shows how good the whole product is. But, uh, you know, we want them to race, but we want it to be clean. We definitely need a finish. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a very difficult situation. But, you know, as I say, we've just got to do our very best under the circumstances. Trying to run down now the VIP Pet Foods, AEG, Sunrise 7 Porsche. Of Quinn. This is quite an intense battle. In fact, uh, the like, trading lap times now. Hackett moves to the inside. He's uh, got him covered under brakes. No! Quinn oh. shuts the door. Oh, Hackett almost forced to go for the ripple strips. Quinn is not giving in. He says, gee, I don't know, I don't know why you're trying to do this to me. I'm uh, somewhat. He's almost seven, eight laps behind. But Hackett really trying to unlap himself and now goes through on the VIP Pet Foods car. The Gary Rogers Motorsport uh, Radio, David Addison. We don't know what it all means, but uh, there's some link to the seven minutes. Please, when this happens, can you understand the work and energy and effort that all your workers have put into this? I expect a fair go for everybody, but it is vital for both of you to finish. Four minutes to go in this race. They'll have two laps to go this time around, if our stats are right. So it's still Murphy. Tanner on a charge. He's got the Four faster car. Go, Four minutes to go. Down they come then to VIP Pet Foods Corner. Tanner having a look on the outside, trying to unsettle Greg Murphy, trying to pressure him into a mistake. All he needs is for him to thump a curb, run a little bit wide, and that's going to give the advantage to Tanner. Nose to tail, they come across the line. 427, almost hidden, and now he looks on the inside. No, can't find a way through there. 216.8, 216.7. Murphy, again, one tenth of a second slower than Tanner that time around. Stationary car at the cutting. The Donut King cutting, you can see. There's a car there right on the oh. racing line. If that brings out the safety car, that's done it, hasn't it, for Murphy? Car in the chase. Up they go. Tandra has got one corner to make this stick. He's going to have a look on the inside. He's going to be able to do it. Nose to tail. That, I think, was Tandra's last chance with that car in the road. Surely he's going to bring the safety car out. Hopefully they can uh, roll it back down out of the way. That's probably the best chance we have. But Murphy well and truly had the door shut then on Tanda. Tanda couldn't get the run. This is where the slow car is around the outside. So at this stage, now again, more slow traffic. Murphy reads it beautifully, though. Tanda goes with him. I think the slow car is the 888 wheel-powered Porsche that's come back out of the pits and ground to a halt. Well, there's no indication yet of a safety car. I think everybody in race control is too engrossed in this battle as well to worry about it. Well, 525 laps, 532 of the distance last year. They won't cover the same amount of distance due to the number of safety cars, the horrific conditions. Listen to the crowd roar on Mount Panorama. The Holden battle isn't over yet. 23 hours, 57 minutes, 10 seconds. Into the last three minutes of the race. It could not be closer, could it? Look at this. The two Monaros running absolutely nose to tail and Murphy under all this pressure. And it's not as if he's not been up all night either. He is a tired man, so is Tanda. And the adrenaline now pumping through them as they come onto Conrad Strait once again. Lap 526. Amazing stuff. Peter Fitzgerald back there still in third place in the Fokker Tires Porsche from Olsen. In the German Porsche car six, the Mosler and Martin Short 900. What's going to happen when they come down to the Caltex? Happen and chase. Look at Tanda. Thinks about a run on the inside. Has the door shut. He's in full attack mode. Another slower car. He's the number 70 Nash Motorsport Porsche that's going to have to dart out of the way. Greg Murphy will hesitate and just work out which way to go. He goes to the outside and Tanda follows him through. They're almost touching now, these two. They're so close. They're going to be side by side. And they're coming down towards the last corner. Not quite. Again, Tanda unable to get the line. So narrow is the circuit. <laughs> Up they come now across the start and finish line. How long have we got? We've got less than two minutes. It's going to be one more lap. One, one more lap, folks. They're on their last lap, and the fight is not over yet. The Monaro rules the mountain, but who's going to rule between Murphy and Tanda? The big long run now up Mountain Straight. Murphy continues to lead. The red car he's sharing with Peter Brock. Will this be Brocky's 10th Bathurst win, or will Garth Tanda take it from him? You'll be lynched if you do, I'm sure. You saw the mechanics looking at the screens then in the Gary Rogers Motorsport Garage. They haven't drawn breath for a quarter of an hour. They are absolutely engrossed in this another slower oh. car negotiated and Murphy there darting up on the inside I reckon I'm tempting fate but I think he might just have done enough on this last lap now but let's see well of course slower traffic may well come into play yellow flags of course for that stop car at the Donut King cutting it is the triple eight Porsche park there more traffic that uh, Greg Murphy and Garth Tander have to weave their way around it's gonna be Conrad straight I think where it'll all be oh. played out but here they come again still tied together these two
and you can see by the body language of the car, these guys are not holding back, they're pushing hard. This is a proper race. Whatever you might think about team orders in motorsport, forget them as far as this is concerned. You heard Gary Rogers taking them off the leash, and aren't we grateful that he did so? Absolutely. Full credit to Gary Rogers Motorsport and Holden for letting these two boys run it uh, cleanly and fairly right to the end as they come down oh, from oh, Coates oh. Oh, look at the slow traffic. Peter Boylan's BMW, the class leader in Class D with Rick Bates behind the wheel at the moment. And Murphy on the brakes. Tander still reading the traffic beautifully with him. They wrap up the Tomlinson, Toyota Altezza as well. There goes Murphy through. Tander's still there. He's lost absolutely nothing. But this is where he could, could, could make the move. They're onto Conrad straight for the last time. We've got 13 seconds to go. The checkered flag will be out this time. Slippery surface flag as well. Another variable to add in on the last lap. But Murphy looking a little bit stronger. There's, what, two, three lengths possibly between the two as they go to the chase for the last time. It's going to be a Monaro 1-2. But which way is it going to go? Is it going to be the 0-5 or the 4-2-7, Craig Daniel? Well, there we go. Tander's got to make his move now. He's got to play the and Murphy's got him covered with 24 hours about to tick over the first car to cross the line once the 24 hour clock has moved through will take the win it's Murphy with Tander right behind him again slow traffic forcing Tander out wide they come through VIP for the last time we're looking at Greg Murphy in 05 he takes the win he gives Peter Brock the perfect 10 can you believe it the Bathurst 24 hours has been bigger better and Brock Peter Brock wins that is 05 with Greg Murphy Jason Bright and Todd Kelly what a fight, folks. What a fight. A great clean fight between Greg Murphy and Garth Tando right to the end, Grant Boyden. What a race. Oh, you couldn't ask for a better finish. The two Holden side by side. The Holden Monaros, and they're going to do a lap of victory almost, making their way down into pit lane now. Let's go to pit lane. Here's Grant Denyer. Peter Brock, 10 out of 10. How does it feel? Fantastic. I tell you what, we are smiled upon by uh, the guys today because I noticed on that last corner, on the last lap, there was a yellow flag, and I thought, Tandy, you can have a go, mate. But, you know, <laughs> that was fantastic, yeah. The heart in the mouth. We look at the traffic that came into play, the stalled car yeah. in the cutting, so yeah. much to come into play. Oh, yes, and uh, I was sitting back there with Jason Bright, and we thought both agreed that we couldn't have a better man behind the wheel than uh, Greg Murphy, because he was, he, <laughs> he was, he was going to do it. There's no doubt about that. Collectively, as a team, we're all wrapped to have two cars after 24 hours come home, one, two nose to tail and have a good ding dong scrap with about five or ten laps to go that's that's what it's all about it's great to see so here's the final placings peter brock greg murphy jason bright todd kelly take the win in the monaro from pretty tandem mcconnell and richards then the first of the porsches morris fitzgerald shearman and tulin then the first of our B-Class competitors, the Bartels, Klaassen, Uwe Elson and Jürgen Elson entry in fourth outright, a great result. Martin Short, Pierce Lamb and Spurl in fifth in car 900. Then Tony Quinn, Clark Quick, Marcus Marshall, Grant Denyer, second in class in the Porsche from Floyd, Donaldson, Halliday and Donaldson, the father and son team there, Stokel, Simonson, Yulden and Peter Hackett in the Lamborghini. They did a great job to bounce back into eighth spot after having tyre problems throughout the weekend. In ninth, the Conduras, Power, Freestone and Wall entry in car 888. And well done to Peter Boyle and Jeff Morgan, Hanson and Bates, taking out D-Class in car 71 and finishing in the top 10. Winners of the Invitational Class Steve Williams, Graham Moore, Terry Bozajak at the Commodore, Russell Cramp, King and Stuber in the BMW, Parker, Waters, Sala and Gazard further back. Third in Class D, the Salmon, Boatwright, Caswell, Hastings, Subaru, then Holt, Young, Brock and Monday in the Mitsubishi from Dean, Rubis and Wanless in the Subaru. Then we go back to Osborne, Roken, Keane and Grotchel. They took out Class E in lucky number 13, a great result. Dean, Pye and Smith finished in 18th spot in car three. Then uh, Bruce and Beric Linton, Jamie Cartwright and Matthew Jackson in the BMW M3R from Chanda, Gillespie and McFarland, McElroy, Douglas Stilwell and Phil Kirkham. Over the page, the Metzler, Kovacs, James Brock and Braham entry in 28 spot at DNF. The Tomlinsons, Neil and Edie in 26 spot in car 42. The Wilson, Conduras, Jenkins, Palmer, Ferrari from the David Russell, Warren and Ian Luff, Scotty Lozman, Holden, Commodore. Then Shepard, Bailey and Doyle in the Honda Integra Type R. Hayson, Woods, Robinson and Hunt in 33. Third spot, Montermini, Pater, Engelhorn and Brabham in 34th spot in car 48. The near Ash, Wilson, Newton, Erdos, Porsche, Pilkington, Cribben, Hill and Hooker went out in the first three and a half hours with engine failure in the Nissan. Then Westbrook, Moore and Mitchell also crashing out in the BMW. 
As the champagne flows at this 24-hour endurance race at Mount Panorama, 31 years after his first Bathurst win, 16 years after his last Bathurst win, Peter Brock finally has the perfect 10. And Monaro making a one and two in the toughest race Australia has to offer. Game over.